Today, we're going to review Kali Linux. Let's go. Disclaimer. Any mentions of penetration testing and computer exploitation tools are for educational and entertainment purposes only. Kali Linux is a Debian-based Linux distro focused on ethical hacking, penetration testing, security research, and reverse engineering. It comes with a full suite of hundreds of penetration testing programs and offers three customized desktop environment options. XFCE, which is the default, GNOME, and KDE. Kali Linux also offers a mobile version called NetHunter Pro, which uses the Fosh desktop and packs the power of Kali into a beautiful Linux-based mobile OS. Kali Linux also uses its own repos, which have newer software instead of Debian's repos, and it's up to date, getting new major point releases four times per year. It used to be called Backtrack Linux and was based on Canopix, which itself is based on Debian. But in March 2013, it was rebased directly on Debian and rebranded to Kali Linux, which is currently the industry standard for penetration testing, security research, etc. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the default XFCE desktop, which has been customized to look much more modern with a beautiful, cool looking theme and some tweaks and modifications. The panel includes a beautiful menu, some pinned apps, workspaces, a CPU usage indicator, and some quick settings like network, sound, notifications, date and time, lock screen, and logout options. Overall, it looks simple and nice and gets the job done. Kali Linux also comes with cool looking wallpapers that I personally like. Unlike most other Linux distros, Kali Linux doesn't have any graphical software center pre-installed by default, so you have to use the terminal to get software. But if you want a graphical software center, you can install GNOME software by opening a terminal and typing sudo apt install GNOME software. Kali Linux comes with hundreds of exploitation and research tools, including tools for information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, database assessment, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering, exploitation, sniffing and spoofing, post-exploitation, forensics, reporting, and social engineering. Notable pre-installed tools include Aircrack NG for Wi-Fi penetration, Burp Suite for web security testing, Hydra for brute force attacks, John the Ripper for password cracking, Maltigo for computer forensics, Metasploit framework for exploitation, Nmap for network discovery, Responder for LLMNR, NBTNS, and MDNS poisoning, SQL Map for SQL injections, Wireshark for network monitoring, Crack Map Exec for Windows penetration testing, FFUF for web fuzzing, PowerShell Empire for post exploitation, and tons more pre installed. There is also thousands more tools available in Kali's repos. A cool feature that is available with the default XFCE edition only is Kali Undercover Mode. If you go to, for example, a coffee shop and don't want to look suspicious, you can enable Kali Undercover Mode, which will temporarily make your desktop look like Windows 10, and on first glance, it looks the exact same. Then once you exit the coffee shop, you can disable Undercover Mode, and you will be returned to the default Kali desktop. Kali Linux has support for a wide variety of hardware and architectures, allowing for it to be installed basically anywhere, even including support for Apple M-series chips. After installing Kali Linux onto a USB drive, you can either install it directly onto your computer, or run it directly off the USB drive without affecting the computer itself, which is called a live environment. Normally, files saved and modifications made to the live environment are erased after a reboot, but you can enable persistent storage if you would like to keep files saved on the live environment and use them every time you plug in your USB and use Kali. Most Linux distros also offer live environments, but very few Linux distros offer persistent storage in the live environment.
If you use the ButterFS file system, you can take a snapshot of your Kali Linux system in its current state, and then if something goes wrong, you can revert to that snapshot of your system, and everything will be restored. This feature isn't specific to Kali Linux, rather any Linux distro that uses ButterFS, but just a good one to know. Overall, Kali Linux is a great option for penetration testing, security research, etc. And I recommend starting with it. And yes, people will say that professional penetration testers use a regular distro like Debian and install the tools they need and configure everything themselves. But if you just want a pre-configured Linux distro with all the penetration testing tools right at your fingertips, out of the box, then Kali Linux is a great choice for beginners and professionals alike. Subscribe if you like my content and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.